I hope to get you fired up about this subject. I'm talking about becoming a, an encourager. Uh, we've listened to some great lessons, some fantastic reminders from God's Word. We do indeed need to follow the examples from our, our, uh, our Bibles. And uh, Lee and Dick have uh, presented some excellent uh, lessons. I'd like to piggyback on that. And what am I talking about? I'm, I'm talking about adopting a ministry. It's so easy to adopt one particular ministry that's one of my favorites, and that is becoming an encourager in the same spirit as Barnabas. He's one of my favorite heroes. He's kind of, you know, in the background. He, he stays back there, okay? But we all remember Barnabas gets mentioned in Acts 4. He sells a piece of land, and he gives all the proceeds to the church. He gets fantastic press, and we know about the people that want to you know, imitate and, and get all that fame and all that. But his greatest contribution was the fantastic courage that he showed in endorsing Paul, the Apostle Paul, to his brethren, because at that time they still thought that he was persecuting Christians. You remember. We all find out about this in Acts 7 through 9. Uh, you remember his conversion on the road of Damascus and all of that. And uh, in verse 27, But Barnabas took him, that is Paul, and brought him to the apostles. And he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. So he was with them at Jerusalem, coming in and going out. And he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Hellenists, but they attempted to kill him. So you see, Barnabas really went out on a limb. He showed tremendous courage in, in endorsing Paul, being his true friend, and endorsing him to the other apostles. And, and that's one of the things that I want to emphasize. We need to be encouragers. We need to adopt a ministry. All Christians should do so. We need to follow Barnabas' lead and see ourselves becoming an encourager. First of all, one of the things we need to do is to gird up our loins and make sure that we really are going to be Christians just like these guys Dick and Lee have talked about. Being a true child of God takes real courage in today's world. You've got to check yourself out, do some soul searching, get back into God's Word, and make certain that you're going to pay the cost because it's not going to be easy. And that's what I'm talking about. Make certain that we really are going to do this thing all the way to the end of our lives. We've got to do what's right. What's right for our family and for our nation. We need to take some leadership upon ourselves in our nation's role in the, in the world and contact our leaders and the government and that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about is emboldening ourselves because we can do so with God on our side. Like his word says, if he's with us, who could possibly be against us? We need to remember that. There's so many examples in God's word that show these words to be true. I know it's not popular. It's not the PC thing, politically correct thing to do now. Okay, but that's what I want to talk about. I want to go back to the story of Jonah. We remember the story from childhood, from Sunday school. We remember it so very, very well. God commissioned Jonah to go to the city of Nineveh. And what did God want him to do? Did God want Jonah to convert all those people to being Jews? No. He wanted them to repent and just change their ways. Behave, basically. He was telling them to behave. And repent. And that's what they did. They repented and saved themselves. Now we know the, the city of Nineveh perished a hundred years later. Yes, I know that. But they saved themselves from the immediate destruction that Jonah preached to them. And that's what I'm trying to say that we as Christians need to do about our American nation. We need to take it upon ourselves to do the same thing. The most powerful point that I gather from the book of Jonah is that God Almighty expects all of us 
from the day of creation to the end of time. He expects us as human beings to act in accordance with the conscience, our soul that God installed in, as our image at our time of our creation. We all have the image of God. We all have a soul whispering to us, our conscience telling us, and we need to remind our fellow Americans, behave, act like him to whom you belong. And that's one thing we need to remember. We need to be part of God's solution and not the problem. We need to remember Paul's lead in motivating the Roman Empire through the letter of Romans. I'm reading Romans 1, verse 20. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are all without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. We all know that through the pen of Paul, Romans, the letter Romans, is a powerful treatise on the logic and the wonderful gospel from our God. And it puts down the Romans pretty harshly because they were leading the world to ruin. And that's what they did. We need to spread the word. The gospel of Christ is good for everybody. God's word repeats this. Even from Isaiah, uh, chapter 49, verse 6. Indeed, he says, it is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. From the very beginning, God has intended the whole world to repent. He wants all of us to come back to him, to heaven. And we need to see ourselves as being a, a, a vessel, a tool in God's hand so that God can shine his light through our lives and be an influence on this world for good. We need to be that influence. We need to rescue our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren from the peril that is happening right in front of us. This nation is, is going to ruin right in front of us. There's also no, uh, more examples uh, from Paul. We remember from Acts 24 and 25, Paul got himself in trouble. Who with? Felix, Festus and King Agrippa. So Paul preached God's word to these very men, these, these government leaders. So that's what I'm saying. Although it's not PC, even in the Lord's church, it's not very popular to preach this kind of stuff because people see it as politics. Brother, you're preaching politics. You're not preaching. No, brother. We got to be, yes, we're, we're Christians first, but I got to admit to you, I'm also an American. And I want my great-grandchildren to grow up in this wonderful country a hundred years from now and still be Americans and be Christians. This is a wonderful country. And uh, I'm just so afraid that we're going to lose it sometime in our, I don't know, our grandchildren's lives. We need to spread the enthusiasm. And like I mentioned before, we need to act like him to whom we belong. We need to think about it. we belong to God. We're a, a peculiar people. We're set aside for God's holy purpose on this planet. And we need to, all of us, adopt a ministry. We need to go to God, God's judgment bar and say, yes, Lord, I was faithful. I did do what you told me to do. I held up my end of the bargain. And he says, good, uh, faithful servant. That's what we want to listen for. Matthew 5, 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing 
but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. We need to see ourselves as being the salt of the earth, being an influence for God, to influence our fellow man back to God's way, remind them of the conscience that, they, that we all have as human beings. We need to be sharing God's love, okay? Also, we need to be patient. This, this process I'm talking about of <laughs> getting America back on track and becoming more godly is not going to be easy. It's not going to be a simple turnaround like the turning of the proverbial aircraft carrier in the water out in the ocean. It took, it took a long time to get this country messed up as badly as it is now, and it's going to take a long time for us to, to see it improve. Uh, we're just going to have to be patient and let God be an influence. But we need to be there for God. Why, you might be asking, why must we do these things? I, I'm saying that we must do these things. And why our country is facing many major moral crossroads. We're hearing it on the radio every day about this uh, uh, budget process. And sadly to say, they're making so many poor choices, just like Lee has talked about. More and more states are succumbing and submissing Submissing, sub, they're, they're converting to the idea of lifestyles. Yeah, it's cool. It's, peace. it's the going thing, man. You've got to convert over and, and be open-minded to alternate lifestyles. That's hogwash. And we've got to call it like it is. That's what God thinks of it. That's what it is. It's ungodly. And it will ruin this country. It's the undoing of our families. I'm afraid it's time for doing or see further demise of our country in the very near future. Proverbs 14.34, I think everyone knows this. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. We need to remember these powerful words. They apply to every country, all time, all past present and future. God commands us to do so or face the consequences on judgment day. Again, Romans 15, verse 8. Now I say that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made to the fathers and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written. For this reason I will confess to you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. Again, we're reminded time and time again. Yes, the Jewish nation they had a purpose of bringing in the Messiah, the perfect sacrifice, God's very own son. But now God has called all men everywhere to repent. And we need to be God's representatives, his ambassadors to our fellow men. And and I'm saying, I'm pleading with you to be mindful and think about your fellow Americans. Revelation chapter 3, or yes, chapter 3, verse 5. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father, and before his angels. Just like Revelation 2.10 says, Be thou faithful to death. This is nothing from which you can retire. God, <laughs> God's retirement plan for Christians is six feet under the ground. That's when you retire. Not a, not a minute before then. We each need to pick up this, this idea, this concept of a ministry. If it's nothing more than, than cleaning up the building, you know, we, we need to take that heart, that, that parable about the talents. If you don't have a talent, go get one. Share with someone and find out what needs to be done, you know. Figure out what your talent is and adopt that ministry. Uh, if you're kind of jealous of someone else's t uh, ministry or whatever, check with them. See if they could use some help. Be their assistant. 
partner, if you wish. See if they're a able to share. But I'm convinced, personal conviction on my part, we all must have a ministry. We've got to have it. God is going to be expecting it, to see it in our, in our lives as Christians. Is it going to keep us out of heaven? I don't know. If you don't have a ministry, is that going to keep you out of heaven? Ooh, I don't want to test God. I want to proudly proclaim and show him, yes, Lord, here's my talent. Or plural, I had several. But the, this was my ministry, and I treasured every moment of it. I'm, I'm asking you to think about that. Now, I know this message sounds a lot like doomsday preaching, as you may have seen on the streets, you know, big cities, streets, or in the movies maybe. But the difference here is that what I've talked about tonight is backed up by many, exa many, many examples of God's Word. People both in disobeying His Word and suffering the consequences or follow His Word and enjoy His blessings a hundredfold and flowing over. Our cup will run over as He's promised. We need to think soberly about these words. We need to go home and think about them, resolve to do something about it, become part of the solution, embold ourselves, contact our congressmen, contact our leaders, and let them know if you have concerns about your children and your grandchildren, about all the garbage that's coming out on TV and the Internet and, the, and these alternate lifestyles, if you're worried about it like I am, I encourage you to let your representatives know. Let them know what's on your heart. And I, I for one, don't hesitate to send them quotes, whole pages, if you like, from the Bible, from God's Word, and remind them. God's Word is timeless. It's always applicable. We can be assured of that. And yes, to your question, I've written several letters to past presidents, our current president, with courtesy copies to the Supreme Court and the U.S. Congress. So all of my government leaders have seen my name and my wife's name, by the way, on several letters. They know. <laughs> They're probably getting tired of my name. But if we band together as Christians as God's family and let them know we won't stand for this anymore, we don't want this country to perish like Nineveh. We, we need to, to think about saving ourselves from whatever's going to happen, whatever could happen. I'm so afraid that, that America is just not, he can't keep this, uh, this path of destruction. So think about what I've said. Also, we need to think about encouraging each other. We need to think about seeing those friends and neighbors and saying, have you, have you become a Christian? Have you thought about your soul? We need to extend God's gospel invitation to each one of our friends and neighbors. We need to think about their soul. We need to love them enough to think, you know, I'd like for you to go to heaven with me. I'd, I'd love to, to share can we talk? You know, can I can I share what's on my heart about my Lord Jesus Christ? If there's anyone that, tonight that needs to be part of God's family, if you have need for any encouragement, the prayers of this family, the love that's in this congregation, it, it's all available to you. But you just got to let us know. Come on down front while we stand and sing. Bring back your broken heart.